As with any visual novel, there's no particular design to follow when it comes to your UI or user interface. Though the main advisement is that you don't make it too clunky so that it blocks or obscures too much of your scene, and it should be self-explanatory to use. In my opinion, an example of a rather good and unique UI is the one in Her Tears Were My Light by Nom Nom Nami. It's such a subtle design that paints the image of a storybook coming to life right in front of you. You can choose to go traditional, or you can come up with your own unique style, but no matter what you choose, make sure it's simple, direct, and visually appealing. The design I've chosen for this series will be reminiscent to the Sakura Fantasy UI. Once you have your design, then you can create your own artistic elements, or download free ones from Google like I did for this example. Now as we're about to build the UI in Unity, let's first dissect it into the parts we know we'll need. A traditional novel UI by itself is going to have three main layers. The order of these layers will determine what's drawn on top of what, so the background will be our first layer. On top of that, in the second layer will be our characters. And the third layer will be the dialogue. Truthfully, we could even say there's a fourth layer, because technically, in most novels, one exists between the character and the dialogue, called a cinematic layer. You've probably seen this in use when a visual novel displays a single piece of artwork during an important moment in the story. It's placed above the background and characters, but underneath the dialogue so the story can still continue to be read. Now there can certainly be more layers added if your design calls for it, but for most visual novels in general, these four layers are the core focus. So have you got your design in mind? If not, take a moment to pause the video and come up with something nice, because we're about to get started. Alright, now let's open Unity up, and we've got ourselves an empty project here. So the first thing I'm going to do is import the images I'll be using to decorate my UI. I like to keep my projects organized with most of the like file types grouped together. So I'll be storing these images in a folder called Resources that we'll use throughout the series. If you're not familiar with the Resources folder, it's one that you have to create on your own, the Assets folder, which you can then use to load file types into Unity via script. We'll use it in later videos, mainly for the characters and backgrounds as we load them in real time. So in Images, I'll make a section for the UI, and Import into Unity. There's the resources folder, let's open it up, and there are my images, which Unity has already imported as sprites, so they're ready to be placed on the canvas. Alright, so let's get started now. Since we don't have a canvas to put any UI elements on yet, let's go ahead and add one. I want to point out something real quick though. When we add a panel to the UI, it's going to have some shade of color visible on its image component like this semi-transparent white here. Ordinarily, we'd just disable that or assign a texture if it's going to be a background, but if you use it for a solid color background or foreground fader, then the default sprite shouldn't be used, because it's not going to cover the whole screen unless you use a sharper texture. Right here, you can see the green from the camera background bleed through the edges of what's supposed to be covering the whole screen. That's just because the sprite being used is a soft square that doesn't fully fill its dimensions. To get a solid color that'll cover everything behind it, just make a white square texture and import it into Unity. Plain old Microsoft Paint will be quick for this. Then just use it in place of the soft square. And the stuff behind this panel isn't visible anymore. That's not something you have to do, but it's good to know if you're going to be using something like this. So we were speaking of layers earlier. I'm going to go ahead and make this black image my placeholder background as layer 1. Since it's the top child of the canvas, it'll always be rendered underneath everything else, which is exactly what we want. Now we've also got our character and dialogue layers to add in. Since there are going to be lots of objects in each layer, it's best to make a root panel for each one that all elements in that layer can be parented to. So this way, whenever you want to reorder, move, or deactivate everything for one layer, you only have to do that to the root panel. It's just one way of simplifying management. However, I don't want the images for any of these panels active though, so I'll just disable them to give a clear view of the background. Now it's time to build the speech box. 
We'll do this by adding text and images to the dialog panel and setting their sprites as the textures we've decided to use. If you're new to Unity, one thing you might notice is that we have two different types of images, standard and raw images. They're relatively similar, but there is one big difference between them. Images operate using 2D sprite or UI images, while raw images operate using 2D texture files. There are advantages to both, but it's beneficial to know when you should use which one. For instance, say you have a transparent image with several objects on it, and you wanted to show one in the UI. It would be difficult to set the coordinates of a raw UV rec to isolate tightly packed items, whereas sprites can split and use them effortlessly. However, anything that's not a sprite can't be rendered with an image component. Now, to the raw image's advantage, you can show any kind of texture file, including movie textures, for displaying opening cutscenes or cinematics. And it's very easy to make that happen, as we'll explore later. Now back to making the speech box. Since my design calls for a box for speech, as well as the speaker's name, I've made two images and scaled them to what looks best right now. But now we need text. Since this text object is strictly for the speech, I'll parent it to my speech box. Then I'll duplicate it and move it to the speaker name area. I think for the name, aligning it vertically center and left on horizontal is for the best view. You can find what suits best for your project, though. But the text is a bit hard to read as it is, so let me change the color to white. And to make it stand out a bit more, I'll also give it a black outline. That looks much better there. Just to add some difference to the name and speech, I'll change the name's font style to bold and italic. You could also import and change its font if you wanted, but I'm not worried about that right now. What I will address, however, is what if the game window is too small to show the name of the character who's currently speaking? If we want to customize this, we'd have to change the overflow settings. So instead of risking it shrinking up if we decrease the window size, I may change the horizontal overflow to allow it past its own boundaries. You can also adjust the line spacing for your text as well. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that's set the anchors of our objects. Because if we enter the game in full screen without them, our images won't adjust to fit the new resolution. Before that though, just make sure the speech box objects are parented to the dialog layer panel. So now every dialog element can be disabled and enabled through their parent object. Now anchors are assigned to any UI element and control how they adjust to the changes in window size. By clicking and dragging one of these white acute triangles, you can adjust the positions of each anchor and change how your objects will scale. Except in certain circumstances, I usually just align them with the bounding box of my rec transform. So now if we hit play, the UI will maintain its proportions. So far, so good, but if there's any part of your design you forgot to add, go ahead and finish it up now. I forgot to add the Options button earlier, so I'll speed through that now. That's basically it for the UI for right now. To end the episode, I'm just going to show how the character layer will look once we have a character in it. And that's good enough for the beginning. We have our UI set up, and in the next video we'll dive into making text appear using a quick dialogue system.